Hi, everybody. It is March 18, 2021. I'm going to start this video by once again announcing Austin from Ohio has been once again suspended. Now he can't post on his primary channel for two weeks. My channel is back up. Okay, well, he had a suspension and then he was able to post on his primary channel and two days later, he gets another suspension. Welcome to YouTube. For those who are just now posting on YouTube, this is not how it used to roll. YouTube used to be really cool before Google purchased it. So I'm very sorry, Austin, but for those of you who don't know, he's, he's back to his backup channel. Unbelievable. It's hard. It, it's really, it, he, there's no reason for this outside of, you know, just wanting to deny the truth to get out there to people who might encounter it. That's the purpose of it. But it really disrupts continuity. And it's very hard to just keep going. But that's all, that's all. I've been doing, that's all a lot of people have been doing. Just keep going. Just keep going. You're doing what is right. They're doing what's wrong. You are doing what's right. And you just have to keep doing what's right. Let go of the results. Just keep doing what's right. So, th this video is primarily about the immigration crisis that we are facing. But first, let me just do a little bit of weather, a little bit of strange but very dangerous happenings taking place. The tornadoes, the severe weather that I posted on last night. Well, it seems to have been taken away. Now, I saw this video late last night. Tornadoes possible in South Carolina. Then I woke up this morning and looked at the uh, radar. Let's just check it out now. Wow. Wow, look how nicely defined it is. And boy, that's one hell of a storm. Well, this is the storm that was over here, and they had another little storm over here in you know the Nebraska area. They brought it together, and now this is what is happening. South Carolina, will they create more storms for you? Possibly because South Carolina was pretty much clear a couple of hours ago, and now they seem to have this line of storms taking place. But really? Whoa. Okay, and as you can tell, the air masses are going in two different directions. Gotta love it. No, you gotta hate it, because it causes an awful lot of damage. The violent impact of dozens of storms that hammered communities from Texas all the way to Georgia. Terrifying scenes like this. Take a look at this. This is in Silas, Alabama. It shows how millions face danger with many now waking up to a very difficult reality this morning. In all, nearly two dozen tornadoes were reported, especially in Mississippi and Alabama. And that's where our lead national correspondent, David Bagnow, is this morning. He's in the city of Tuscaloosa. David, good morning to you. Good morning, my friend. We found one hell of a story of survival. Jennifer Patterson in her mobile home. She hears that there's a tornado approaching the Moundville area about two minutes down the road. So she knows, listen, they tell you you don't want to be in a mobile home when a tornado's coming. So she tries to get to her car, realizes she forgot her keys, goes back to the mobile home and realizes, I don't have time to get the keys or get in the car. So she runs behind the mobile home to the woods and holds onto a tree. Watch this. This is my living room. 
this is where I sit every day. Jennifer Patterson told our Birmingham affiliate CBS 42 that when she saw a storm coming toward her home, she ran into a ravine in the woods. I was down in there holding on, and that little tree right there, yonder's probably the one I was holding on to. She stayed on her phone with her son as the trees collapsed around her. He was hearing his mama scream. He was hearing the sound go. And, uh, you know, I was just, all I could do was just say, Jesus, watch over me. Jesus, watch over me. And then it just like it just kept going and going and going. And finally, I just said, Jesus, take it away. And it's just like you could hear it easing up. She says she was worried she wasn't going to survive. And now she is picking up what's left of her property. There are others in similar situations, from homes in Alabama to farms in Mississippi. I just hear it. I hear the, the tornado is just coming. And, oh, my God, it was, it was horrible. And my baby, she's just crying and crying and crying. Sabrina Hargrove says she and her child sheltered in a bathtub with her boyfriend and put a mattress on top of them as what they believed was a tornado hit their home, blowing out the windows to the home and their vehicles. Only thing I could do is just lay there and just, just wait for it to pass. Girl, get a shot of this. Blue, the dog, was outside when the tornado hit the home. Outside. Yes, he was outside. And only thing I could think about was, Lord, is my dog okay? Because right now the Lord has spared our lives. We're okay. So I get up, look out the back window, and he's out there just standing like nothing even happened. <laughs> like he's a soldier. At the nearby University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, hundreds of students packed into campus buildings after they were forced to shelter in place. Across the region, you had schools, vaccination clinics, businesses, all shut down after people were warned. It's going to be a dangerous day. I hate the dramatic narration. You know, it's like they're Hollywood stars. Right. Alabama hitting so hard right now. They were under tornado warnings for six and a half hours straight. At least 16 tornadoes reported in that state alone. And take a look at the devastation this morning in Chilton County. The Swisters just ripped through home after home, so many destroyed. Mississippi is also hit very hard, and Ginger starts us off in Jackson with the very latest and where the danger is heading. Good morning, Ginger. Michael, this giant tree severing this house, splitting it in two, and you can see these huge trunks. I mean, these are like a foot and a half in diameter, seven of those, so it took it right through the house. Thankfully, the family that was inside was able to crawl out the window and escape, and they're okay. Thankful to be okay is how so many folks feel from here through Alabama and Georgia. Like a tornado. In an ugly... Sorry. Most of the clip now are clips that I posted in the video last night. How are people going to recover? But take a look at that tree, okay? That's a very diseased tree. All of the geoengineering... Solar radiation, whatever you want to call it, solar radiation management, chemtrails, all of the toxic metals, nanoparticulates that they have been spraying for years, even this huge tree would just be uplifted. I mean, I don't. Look. Sort of home, a lightning strike in Athens left a. I am. I don't know what I am anymore. I just don't know what I am anymore. That this has been going on for years and years and years and years. And. Well, when you have a willfully ignorant population, then you're living in a country that is dangerous. But. I was sent this by a subscriber who lives in Texas. East Texas vehicle goes up in flames after lightning strike. Two passengers not injured. The truck... Here. Um, when driving from Athens to Corsica, uh, Sicana on Highway 31, the driver said they heard a loud boom... And then everything on the dashboard started flashing. The truck then suddenly shut down in the middle of the highway. The driver was able to coast to the shoulder and saw flames coming from under the dash. And 
Fortunately for them, they got out. Okay. Well, that's what electromagnetic frequencies can do. Driver stranded on Highway 31. Check out this picture right here posted by the Karens Volunteer Fire Department. Authorities say the driver of this pickup heard a huge boom as he was driving toward... Heard a huge boom. And then dashboard lights start flickering and then suddenly his vehicle stops. Stops. Lightning certainly could do that, but... Don't people realize that they've been able to create lightning for, wow, many, many decades? And this in California, Southern California, California neighborhood leveled in powerful commercial grade fireworks explosion. Apparently somebody had a lot of fireworks and they went off. Talk about being traumatized. Set off car alarms. Americans, you are never going to experience security again. It's done. Ontario, California. Three blocks from the uh, explosion. So, two people dead that were in the home, other homes damaged. People felt the ground shake. Boy, what's going on? So, flooding in Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, Sorry, my mic wasn't on. It just looks like the roads have been hit. Looks like a water main break. Flash flooding, they're calling this? Look at this. The roads. Well, that's what rain does today. It destroys roads and bridges and homes and everything. All right, um, Italy. Oh, 
How many times has Italy been hit with these, well, what, floods, flash floods? Sure, I wish people would ask some questions about what's taking place. But here in Australia. From dust to mud. <laughs> 230 kilometres northwest of Longreach. If you had to get a pin and stick it in the middle of Queensland somewhere, you'd land on us. The Orielton cattle farm. That's the heaviest fall and the most we've had um, in about five years. Transformed by liquid gold. My father always used to say it doesn't rain money, but it's very close. Closer to the coast at Mount Ball, celebration turned to devastation. The deluge filling dams, then destroying them. Water supplies soaked up by soil. It toppled trees near Yapoon and a record. The most rainfall we've recorded within one 24-hour period, not just in March, but for any time of year. 550 millimetres at Byfield, which is now... Just wanted to point out, you know, drought, drought, drought for years on end. That has a, a real um, detrimental effect on farming, and then you finally get rain. Yeah! Oh, wait a second. It's way too much rain. And then the farms are devastated. Isn't it great that man controls the weather? So, feds will house up to 3,000 immigrant teens at Dallas Convention Center. What is going on? It's a decompression center for boys ages 15 to 17, beginning earlier this week, and Texans are not happy about it. U.S. Health and Human Services has been rushing to open facilities across the county to house migrant kids who are otherwise being held by the U.S. Border Patrol. Border Patrol is generally not supposed to detain children for more than three days, but has been holding kids for longer because there is next to no space in the health and human service system. Department of Homeland Security on Saturday enlisted the Federal Emergency Management Agency to help manage and care for the growing number of children unlawfully crossing the border. The memo sent to Dallas City Council members on Monday said that FEMA and uh, Health and Human Services will be responsible for providing shelter management and contracts for food, security, cleaning, medical care at the downtown convention center. That's what happens when you have an open border. And to those who want to say, oh, yeah, but look what Trump did. He stopped all. No, he didn't stop all of it. All right, um, but the, the, the border is so wide open that, well, I'll show you, Biden now is saying, please stay, stay home, stay home. Holy shit. Can't Americans see that, first of all, our governments do not do anything good for the American people now? You want to claim that I'm racist? The American people comprise all races. When I say American people, I don't mean white Americans. I mean all Americans. There's an awful lot of Hispanics, black, and all different kinds of races and nationalities. When I say Americans, I'm talking about those citizens. I'm talking about those who have been actually born here, raised here in families that they might have parents that migrated to this country. But guess what? Their parents went through the proper channels to receive their citizenship. They weren't handed a citizenship. They weren't told, hey, come here illegally and you'll get medical care, cleaning, security, food. This is destroying us. It's destroying all of us. All American citizens are being destroyed. Collective action is necessary, and we will do our best to support this humanitarian effort that was deliberately created by the Biden 
administration. This costs American citizens. It costs. Money comes out of your pocket. The Rio Grande Ferry Service, a riverbank, the flicker of a flashlight, frightened faces, uh, and finally a scramble into the U.S. repeated all night. Border agents admit that under Biden, migrants have gone from a trickle to, to a torrent. DailyMail.com visited the U.S.-Mexico border where boatloads of migrants were seen crossing into the United States. Over a two-hour period, a three-man trafficking crew made five drop-offs, cramming as many as 10 people into a boat designed for four. Of the 96 newcomers, they dumped 13 were unaccompanied children, including sisters age 5 and 12. It's a broken system. Everything is broken in our country. Nothing gets fixed. The numbers have exploded since Biden took office. They're from Peru, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, and happy to be in America. We are here because I can get a good job and my children can have a better life. Uh, 32-year-old Christian Meha, I'm don't, uh, I can't stand myself when I'm trying to pronounce names and I'm, it's like I, I, I have some kind of name disorder in my brain. So he crosses the border with his wife and daughters age five and eight. And you think, well, maybe you can get a better job here from where you are from. But our economy is and has been collapsing on a daily basis more and more. No, things are not good. White House won't tell officials how many illegal immigrants entering Texas have COVID-19. I thought COVID-19 was the most important, important issue for Biden. Wear that mask. Wear that mask. Get vaccinated. And he's just letting people in? Really? Something's wrong with this picture. Lawmakers pressed Biden administration to explain why COVID-positive migrants were transferred into the U.S. Jeez, something is wrong with this picture. Listen to Corbin. Uh, All Democrats block more funding for migrant children in growing border crisis. The Democrats are blocking the funding? Wow, that must mean there's a big crisis on the border. The United States is facing a brewing humanitarian crisis at the border. At the same time, we are experiencing a global pandemic. This motion will help make sure we are prepared. In January 2021, the Border Patrol recorded about 75,000 encounters on the southwest land border. Quiet in the chamber, please. That's a 60 percent increase over the last year which was just before the last major migrant surge. The Department of Homeland Security is reportedly projecting that it will apprehend 117,000 unaccompanied children this year. The Department of Health and Human Services and the Office of Refugee Resettlement are struggling to maintain enough bed space to shelter all of these unaccompanied children transferred into its custody. It's estimated that COVID-19 restrictions have reduced their capacity by about 40 percent. The Biden administration has reactivated a facility at Carrizo Springs, Texas, to handle this influx of unaccompanied children, and press reports indicate that an additional facility may be necessary. So this motion, simply put, would commit the bill to the Committee on Help with instructions to provide adequate funding for the Office of Refugee Resettlement to address this brewing humanitarian crisis. And... Democrats are blocking the funding? Hmm. Something's up here. So this Republican is calling for more funding. Democrats block funding for migrant children. 
Okay. Um, here. In three hours, 263 immigrants made their way towards the processing site Border Patrol has set up after they illegally crossed into the U.S. That number is just the people who wanted to be caught, and it included women, small children, unaccompanied minors. They're just coming right on in. That's no problem, right? Because our economy can handle this, right? Wrong. And we've got that COVID pandemic. And we're just allowing people to cross the border. By the way, you know, the uh, <laughs> Border Patrol travel alert. The temporary restriction on non-essential travel at U.S. land border ports of entry remain in effect. Essential travel and trade continue unimpeded. But non-essential travel, well, you can't cross the border. Non-essential. So, you know, Americans want to go into Mexico crossing the border. And uh, you'll be stopped and asked why. And then if they deem that essential, you'll get across. If they deem it non-essential, you won't. However, this apparently is essential. Do you see something wrong? <sighs> Let's listen to even uh, mainstream media reporting on this crisis. All right. Uh, now, we all know that Biden is certainly not calling the shots. He's, his incapacity is great. But this is, well, quote-unquote, the deep state, just another method to destroy this country and to destroy the U.S. economy even further. Yes, we're going to begin with a humanitarian crisis on the southern border that is growing larger and more dire by the day. Tonight, we have got the stunning new numbers. Sources tell CBS News more than 13,000 migrant children who entered the country without their parents are now in U.S. custody. The government says even more adults are being turned back every day. The Secretary of Homeland Security admitting today that so many people are now crossing the border. His department is on pace to stop more migrants than in the past 20 years. And with so many children, including toddlers, now flooding into the country, CBS News has learned the Biden administration is running out of space to house them and people to process their claims. Now, President Biden said today he has no plans to visit the border right now. And DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says while the situation is difficult, his department is tackling it. But critics of Mr. Biden, including Republicans in Congress, are blaming the president tonight for rolling back the strict border policies of the Trump administration. We've got a lot of new reporting on this, along with some important headlines on two coronavirus vaccines. Our team is standing by. CBS's Maria Vidal is going to lead off our coverage tonight from the southern border in Texas. Good evening, Maria. Good evening, Nora. Right now, CBS has learned that unaccompanied minors on average are being held in facilities like this one for 120 hours. That breaks down to five days and well over what the law allows of 72 hours. The Biden administration is calling this a challenge, but local law enforcement officers that we embedded with say this is an absolute crisis. And yes, it is. It's a challenge. No, it's a crisis. But listen to this reporter ask, sacky, sacky, circle. I'm going to circle around on that. Hey, that, that's a good question. Let me circle back. Let me circle. Let me just circle. Let me, let me just utter crap. Speak utter crap. Now, during the Trump years, Trump himself was personally attacked for his vile jailing of children. How those children coming across the border 
oh, they Trump ripped them out of their mother's arms, sent them back. I mean, okay. Well, the Democrats, the you should be embarrassed. Anybody who claims that they're a Democrat should be really embarrassed to be a Democrat. All they do is destroy this country and blame everybody else for the destruction. It's amazing. Interviewed some children that were in facilities. The children described sleeping on the floor, being hungry, not being, not seeing the sun for days. How is that acceptable for the Biden administration to keep children in those sorts of conditions, given the fact that she said you, you were an administration that's going to be more humane than the previous one? Well, these, let me first say this is, um, heartbreaking. Uh, It's a very emotional issue for a lot of people, um, and it's very difficult and challenging. And obviously, these these TBP facilities are not made for kids. So one of the reasons, uh, or a driving reason why uh, the president has pushed to take all of the actions that I outlined earlier when Phil asked the question is because we want to expedite getting these kids out of these CBP facilities as quickly as possible. And that's our goal and our objective, and into shelters as quickly as possible, then into sponsored homes while their cases are being considered and adjudicated. Uh, We are trying to work through what was a dismantled and unprepared system because of the the F, the role of the last administration. It's going to take some time, but we are very clear-eyed about what the problems are and very focused on uh, putting forward solutions. And I understand the idea of these facilities not being designed by children, but children being hungry, sleeping on the floor, not being allowed outside for days at a time. Why is that acceptable to go on even for one more day? Why is that something that's not being outlawed right now? How is the administration not stopping that today? Well, Yamisha, it's not acceptable, but I think the challenge here is that there are only there are not that many options. So the options are, and we have a lot of critics, but many of them are not putting forward a lot of solutions. The options here are send the kids back on the journey, send them to unvetted homes, or work to expedite moving them into shelters where they can get uh, health uh, treatment by medical doctors, by, uh, by educational resources, legal counseling, mental health counseling. That's exactly what we're focused on doing. And this is an across the administration effort that we are committed from the top to making changes on as quickly as possible. Well, maybe you shouldn't have opened the border for all of those migrant unaccompanied children. If you weren't ready, you're going to blame the previous administration? Uh, This is so sickening. I'm so done with Americans on the whole. On the whole means not everyone, but most. Never take responsibility for anything they do. I'm so unbelievably done. This country is so done. It's cooked. It's, you know, it's overcooked. It's listening to these people who are absolutely despicable. They have been in their offices forever. Oh, they change the face. They might change a gender or a sex. They might, you know, change names. They're so unbelievably despicable. Sick. God, I'm so tired of it. Biden border boomerang. Thousands of illegal immigrant children penned in facilities akin to jails. Jeez. That's what we were hearing for four years during the Trump administration. Now it's the Biden administration. No policies ever change. Nothing ever changes. Unbelievable. Mainstream media, because the crisis is so big, they can't spin this, you know, like Saki spins it. The Biden Federal Housing Administration is now guaranteeing mortgages for illegal aliens. Wow. Maybe that's why they're coming. (sighs) Children packed into Border Patrol tent for days on end. Packed conditions, sleeping on the floor, not enough mats. Oh, we can't afford bring in more mats, haven't been allowed to phone their parents, other relatives, 
despite concerns about the coronavirus, the children are kept so closely together that they can touch the person next to them. Some have to wait five days or more to shower. There isn't always soap available, just shampoo. It's pretty surprising that the administration talks about the importance of transparency and then won't let the attorneys for children set eyes on them or where they're staying. I find that very disappointing. No, there's something, well, very dark wrong about that. Although none of the children reported situations as severe as during the Trump era. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, God. Of course. Lawyers weren't able to lay eyes on any of it to see for themselves. So they were just piecing together what they were told. Lawyers are entitled under Flores to conduct oversight of ch child detention. The Justice Department declined to comment Thursday on why the lawyers were denied access. The Biden administration has not responded to several requests from Associated Press. Government figures show a growing crisis as hundreds of children cross the border daily and taken into custody. Uh, custody. More children are waiting longer in Border Patrol custody because long-term facilities operated by Health and Human Services have next to no capacity. The majority of youths detained are teenagers, detaining very young children who were in some cases separated from adult caretakers. A mother of one four-year-old girl from Guatemala who crossed the border March 5th with her aunt. Border authorities expelled the aunt and labeled the girl unaccompanied by a parent, placing her in the Donna tent. Boy, I think that girl was ripped from the arms of her aunt. They expelled the aunt. They kept the girl four years old. Talk about sex trafficking. Whole lot don't know. Our fabulous, exceptional, morally superior federal agencies are involved in sex trafficking. These kids, I'm sorry, what, what's, this is so evil. The girl's parents live in Maryland. Her mother told the AP that she didn't know their daughter's whereabouts until Sunday, didn't speak to her until Monday. According to the mother, the girl was unable to speak. In a nearly 20-minute phone call, she cried as if something was going on, as if she was scared. The parents asked for their daughter to be released to them directly, but on Monday, she was sent from South Texas to, to foster care in Michigan. Okay, she's got a mother here. What's going on? When she spoke to her mother Tuesday morning, the girl was no longer crying, but still wasn't able to speak. She didn't say anything. I tried everything I could, but nothing. The girl is traumatized. Homeland Security and uh, Health and Human Services initially said they could not directly release the child to her mother. But after the family's lawyers threatened to sue following inquiries from AP, the government notified the girl's mother Wednesday that they could expedite her release. Wow. Why was that four-year-old sent to foster care in Michigan? Biden's kids in cages prove his hypocrisy on immigration, doesn't it? doesn't it? The hypocrisy in this country is so sickening. Time. A cage is still a cage, and a house is still a home. Home is still a house. President Biden must end U.S. detention of children and families. Even Time magazine coming out. Cages. They're in cages. Sleeping on the floor. 
And I guess it's the Trump administration's fault, right? It's the Trump administration's fault. And this disgusting, despicable... What really gets me is that we still have a whole lot of Americans who support these people. And that is so, it, it just reflects how sick and twisted this entire country is. Fearless reporter confronts Nancy Pelosi on Biden's border crisis. Yes, sir. Madam Speaker, I just wanted to ask you about the uh, surge of unaccompanied minors at the southern border. The Biden administration has acknowledged that the humanitarian effort that they have may be an incentive for them to come. What would you like to see done out there? Well, I, I don't know. I haven't I, I've heard them say that that would be an incentive. It is an incentive. You're going to give mortgages out to illegal immigrants? And you don't think it's an incentive? Medical care, housing, education handed to illegal immigrants, driver's licenses? No, you don't think it's an incentive. Home is here. Wow. Well, this was just posted four hours ago, live, Pelosi, Hispanic Caucus, speak on immigration, welcoming, welcoming those who have never gone through the process to achieve citizenship in the United States. Home is here. Look, hey, home is here. Come on over. Come on over. Because your home is here. No. No, we don't. It's no incentive. Sick. Biden. Uh, March 20. I can't see the dates, but how it started. Donald Trump's remain in Mexico policy is dangerous, inhumane and goes against everything we stand for as a nation of immigrants. My administration will end it. Joe Biden, United States government official, will end it, goes against everything we stand for as a nation of immigrants. We never stood for illegal immigrants. Never stood for that. Oh, and don't, don't leave those comments. No one's illegal. You know, I, I don't do the politically correct. So, how it's going? Yes, I can say quite clearly, don't come over, Biden tells migrants. Don't leave your town or city or community, he added. There's too many of you coming over. Migrant President Biden stirs Mexican angst over boom time for gangs. Mexico's government worried the new U.S. administration's asylum policies are stoking illegal immigration and creating business for organized crime. And there's quite a bit of crime coming in. And our Border Patrol is doing his doing their best to uh, stop it. But for-profit detention centers, for-profit, thousands of children in Border Patrol custody longer than the court mandated maximum 72 hours with more than 100 kids held for more than 10 days Department of Homeland Security Secretary directed FEMA uh, to look for available options, the Dallas Convention Center, um, turned to an all too familiar resource, private companies. Who were those private companies? Um, Claiborne, Serco, Pacific 
architects and engineers. And, well, two of those companies have a history of employing employees that have sexually abused children, have physically abused children. Yeah, for profit. And if you read this article, you'll find out that if you don't put two and two together, that, hmm, these companies seem to be headed by criminals that commit crimes, and our government you know, gives them contracts like $1.25 billion or millions, $750 per day for one child. So if you are doing per head private companies that want to increase their profits, they want more and more children in these detention centers. It's an incentive to get more children into these centers and hold them there because they get paid $750 a day. Wow. So, Homestead, which is a Claiborne-owned uh, detention center, I think, but it gets nearly $2 million every day from the U.S. Oh, oh from you, the taxpayer. Between 2014 and 2018, there were over 4,500 complaints of sexual abuse filed by minors in the custody of the Department of Health and Human Services. These kids are being so traumatized. Where they end up? Nice facility, isn't it? The Carrizo Springs Influx Care Facility, reopened by the Biden administration. I believe this was one of the jails that all those Democrats were screaming about. Multi-million dollar contract to a for-profit company to detain immigrant children would be a reversal of the administration's signals to back away from relying on private prisons and detention centers. We've got a problem. We've had a problem. We have many problems. None of the problems ever get solved. When will people stop supporting those who are destroying us? Those who are destroying us. When will they stop? And it doesn't matter, Democrat, Republican. In the first Democratic primary debate, Biden says when he's president, illegal immigrants should immediately surge to the border. That's in a quote, but I didn't hear it in this tweet. Biden, as a presidential candidate in 2008, you supported the border wall saying, unlike most Democrats, I voted for 700 miles of fence. This is what you said. Then you serve as vice president in an administration that deported 3 million people, the most ever in U.S. history. Do people know that? That it was the Democrats um, returning, deported 3 million, the most ever? It was the Obama-Biden administration, the most ever deported. But you hear the Democrats during the Trump years. He's deporting so many. Why can't Americans fix their brains? Did you do anything to prevent those deportations? I mean, you've been asked this question before and refused to answer, so let me try once again. Are, are you prepared to say tonight that you and President Obama made a mistake 
about deportations. Why should Latinos trust you? What Latinos should look at is comparing this president to the president we have is outrageous. Number one. There we go again. I'm not going to answer the question. I'm going to blame the Trump administration. And did he even compare the Trump administration with the Obama administration? There was no comparison. He was just asking Biden if the Obama-Biden administration made a mistake in deporting three million. I, do Americans even know how to communicate directly, you know, in a straightforward way? Do they know how to answer questions? I don't think so. One, we didn't lock people up in cages. We didn't separate families. We didn't do all of those things. Number one. Now you're doing it. Oh, wait, you did it before, too. It was, <laughs> and they were blaming Trump for housing children in these cages. And they were pictures of those children in cages during the Obama years. Sick. I'm sorry. We don't know how to think straight. This is why our country's going down. The American people put up with the lowest of the low. At the same time, thinking they're exceptional. One. Number two. Number two, by the time this is the president who came along with the DACA program. No one had ever done that before. This is the president sent a le legislation to the desk saying he wants to find a pathway for the 11 million undocumented in the United States of America. This is the president who's done a great deal. So I'm proud to have served with him. What I would do as president is several more things because things have changed. I would, in fact, make sure that there is, we immediately surge to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be. How did I not hear that? I've listened to this twice. I didn't hear that. That's not good. Sorry, he did say it. As president, <laughs> immediately surged to the border. Be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. I would change the order that the president just changed, saying women who were being beaten and abused could no longer claim that as a reason for asylum. And by the way, retrospectively, you know, the 25th anniversary of the Violence Against Women Act is up. The Republican Congress has not reauthorized it. Let's put pressure on them to pass the Violence Against Women Act now. But yeah, but you, you didn't answer the question. Well, the question did, did, you make the question. A, no, did you make a mistake with those deportations? The president did the best thing that was able to be done at the How about time. you? I'm the vice president of the United States. Good answer. All right. Look. We were, we're not going anywhere good. Americans actually voted for this guy. They actually voted for him. It's frightening. Now, he didn't get the 73 million votes. He didn't outdo Obama. That is such crap. And anybody who believes that really has a serious problem. They have brain damage as far as I'm concerned. But this is the guy. Who is the president of the United States now? This is the guy who needs to stand accountable for the crisis on the border. And Americans who voted for him need to stand accountable for their vote. We're going down, allowing illegal immigrants to come right in at a time when our economy is near done when we have so many American citizens who desperately need help. We're just bringing more and more people in, spending huge amounts of money on them and not American citizens, and Americans are just a-okay with that. I don't know what to do anymore.